Hello dear friends, and welcome to this video. In this video, we will have a brief overview of mitral stenosis. So, let's begin. The normal area of mitral valve is 4 to 6 square centimeters. Stenosis is said to be present when this area is reduced. Almost all cases of mitral stenosis are due to rheumatic heart disease, but 30% of patients have no history of rheumatic fever. Pathophysiology Rheumatic fever leads to immune-mediated damage to the mitral valve. This occurs as a result of cross-reactivity between the streptococcal antigen and the valve tissue. The resulting inflammation leads to scarring and narrowing of the mitral valve orifice. Stenotic mitral valve results in elevated left atrial and as a consequence, elevated pulmonary venous pressure leading to pulmonary congestion. Anything that increases blood flow across the mitral valve, such as exercise, tachycardia etc., exacerbates the pulmonary venous hypertension and associated symptoms. Elevated left atrial pressure leads to left atrial enlargement, which can lead to the development of atrial fibrillation or AFib. Long-standing mitral stenosis can also result in pulmonary hypertension and ultimately can result in right ventricular failure. Clinical features Patients are usually asymptomatic until the mitral valve area is reduced to approximately 2 square centimeters. Pulmonary hypertension causes dyspnea, hemoptysis, and chronic bronchitis-like picture. Orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea are also present if there is pulmonary congestion. Also, there may be fatigue, palpitations, chest pain, and rarely, infective endocarditis. Thromboembolism is a complication, which can occur in patients who have developed AFib due to mitral stenosis. Pressure from the large left atrium on local structures causes symptoms such as hoarseness, if there is pressure on the recurrent laryngeal nerve, dysphagia due to pressure effects of LA on the esophagus, and bronchial obstruction. Signs of mitral stenosis There is a malar flush on the cheeks due to low cardiac output. Pulse volume is low. Atrial fibrillation is common in mitral stenosis, and you may find an irregularly irregular pulse. There is an undis placed, tapping apex beat, which is explained as a palpable first heart sound. On auscultation, the first heart sound, or S1, is loud, and it may be the most prominent auscultatory finding in mitral stenosis. Second heart sound, or S2, is normal. S2 is followed by the opening snap, which is due to the sudden opening of the stenotic, yet pliable mitral valves. The distance between S2 and the opening snap can give an indication as to the severity of the stenosis. The closer the opening snap follows S2, the worse is the stenosis. Opening snap is followed by a murmur, which is low-pitched, mid-diastolic rumble, and then presystolic accentuation. The duration of murmur increases with an increase in stenosis severity. The murmur is heard best with the bell of stethoscope, in the left lateral decubitus position. Murmur accentuates when the breath is held by the patient in expiration. With a long-standing disease, you may find signs of right ventricular failure. These include right ventricular heave, jugular venous distension, hepatomegaly and ascites, and signs of pulmonary hypertension such as loud pulmonary component of second heart sound. gram steel murmur can occur due to pulmonary regurgitation. If right ventricular failure occurs, ascites and edema can also be seen. All signs and symptoms of mitral stenosis will increase with exercise and during pregnancy. Differential diagnoses of mitral stenosis include left ventricular failure due to any cause, mitral valve prolapse, pulmonary hypertension due to other causes, left atrial myxoma, core triatriatum in patients under 30, and tricuspid stenosis. Investigations. ECG may show AF, P mitral due to LA hypertrophy, features of right ventricular hypertrophy, and progressive right axis deviation. Chest X-ray may show typical features of mitral stenosis. These include left atrial enlargement leading to straightening or mitralization of the left heart border. 
You may also see double density shadow in the right cardiac silhouette and splaying of carina due to left atrial enlargement. There may be pulmonary congestion evident by upper lobe blood diversion and curly B lines. Mitral calcification can sometimes also be seen on X-ray. In advanced cases of mitral stenosis, there may also be findings consistent with pulmonary hemosiderosis. Echocardiogram is the diagnostic investigation of choice. It shows a narrow, fish-mouth-shaped orifice. Echocardiogram also helps in the assessment of the severity of valvular stenosis, associated valvular regurgitation, and the presence of other valvular diseases. It can also reveal left atrial enlargement and can help in excluding left atrial clot in atrial fibrillation. It also helps in assessing the right heart in advanced disease. Cardiac catheterization is not necessary for the diagnosis, but is indicated if there is previous valvotomy, signs of other valve diseases, angina, severe pulmonary hypertension, or calcified mitral valve. To give you exam pearl here, features of severe stenosis include a shorter distance between S2 and opening snap, longer duration of diastolic murmur, and on echocardiography, mitral valve area less than 1 square centimeter. Treatment. No therapy is required in mild, asymptomatic cases. Medical treatment include diuretics for pulmonary congestion and edema. Beta blockers are used to decrease heart rate and thus increase diastolic time to improve LA emptying and LV filling and so cardiac output. Calcium channel blockers and digoxin can be used as alternative options. Heart rate control is especially crucial in those patients having AF. If medical treatment fails to control symptoms, balloon valvuloplasty is done where valves are pliable and non-calcified. Other surgical options include open mitral valvotomy or valve replacement. Thromboembolism prophylaxis with warfarin is considered in patients with AF. And this is it for this video. Thank you for subscribing to this channel and liking and sharing this video.